Welcome to this daily devotion for Friday, September 3rd, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and welcome you to this time where we can grow in love of God and neighbor. Take a breath. Center yourself. Our theme this week is reconciliation. And so let us step into the presence of God. Lord and friend, in the quietness of this hour, reconcile our contrary motives and conflicting desires. Give us a singleness of purpose that we may come into your presence unashamed and sit under your gaze without blushing. Amen. Our theme psalm has been Psalm 130. Today, I will read it in its entirety. Again, as you reflect back, what was that word or phrase? Hear it again. Maybe that speaks to you in a new way. Maybe there's another word or phrase that reaches out to you that you can take into the weekend. Psalm 130, a pilgrimage song. I cry out to you from the depths, Lord. My Lord, listen to my voice. Let your ears pay close attention to my request for mercy. If you kept track of sins, Lord, my Lord, who would stand a chance? But forgiveness is with you. That's why you're honored. I hope, Lord. My whole being hopes. And I wait for God's promise. My whole being waits for my Lord more than the night watch waits for the morning. Yes. More than the night watch waits for the morning. Israel, wait for the Lord, because faithful love is with the Lord, because great redemption is with our God. He is the one who will redeem Israel from all its sins. Amen. We move into our final scripture reading this week, going to the Gospel of Luke chapter 6 starting in verse 37, Luke 6, 37. Don't judge, and you won't be judged. Don't condemn, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good portion, packed down, firmly shaken, and overflowing will fall into your lap. The portion you give will determine the portion you receive in return. Jesus told them a riddle. A blind person can't lead another blind person, right? Won't they both fall into a ditch? Disciples aren't greater than their teacher, but whoever is fully prepared will be like their teacher. Why do you see the splinter in your brother or sister's eye, but don't notice the log in your own? How can you say to your brother or sister, brother, sister, let me take that splinter out of your eye when you don't see the log in your own eye? You deceive yourselves. First, take the log out of your eye. Then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother or sister's eye. God bless the reading of the scripture today. <laughs> I don't know why this isn't written on our hearts, why, why we get so obsessed with certain rules and certain passages, but we forget all of these times that Christ specifically calls us not to judge. Christ himself says, I did not come into the world to judge the world, but to save it. We know John 3, 16. We forget John 3, 17, and it is a frustration of mine. I understand. And I love, I mean, Jesus is so practical here. Forgive. Don't judge. Don't condemn. And why? Because life is better when you don't. That's what he's saying. A good portion, packed down, firmly shaken, overflowing, will fall into your lap. Why? Because when you are judging, condemning, not forgiving, holding on to grudges, holding on to your stuff, you're not living your best life. You're not living into reconciliation. You're not living into the kingdom. You're not part of the household of God. You're sitting out with your arms folded, throwing a tantrum like the older brother in the story of the prodigals. Jesus wants your best life. 
I want your best life. We should want each other's best life. And so why are you concerned with what everybody else is doing? What everybody else wants? What everybody else is doing wrong when you're probably screwing up yourself? Work on yourself first and then help. I like this. It's Jesus like, yeah, you're, you're concerned with your, your brother or sister's splinter in their eye. You got a log in your own. And what's, he, what's his advice? Get yourself straightened out and then help the other person get straightened out. Don't just point at them and say, you're bad. Look at that and help them take it out. That's why we're in this together, to help each other, to love each other, to support each other. Why is it so hard for Christians to do that? Because that's what we should be doing. That's our first and foremost call. Reconciliation means loving neighbor. Our final reading from the uh, week comes from Richard Gula to walk together again. We must not so stress our relationship with God that we forget our relationship with one another. And we must not so stress our relationship with one another that we have no need to look for God for forgiveness. Reconciliation involves both God and neighbor. Anyone committed to a living a life of reconcil- reconciliation must attend to the dynamics of love in relationship with God, others, self, and the world. Amen, amen, and amen. That's why I love Methodism, because we are not a people just focused on personal piety, devotion, or on acts of mercy, love of others. We are people called, as John Wesley thought was the fundamental part of Scripture, love God, love your neighbor. The author here, Richard, expands it. Love yourself, love God, love your neighbor, love the world. And I think that's good. The idea is it's not this, well, First, I got to love God, then I can love neighbor. First, I got to love neighbor, then I can love God. Or no, I got to focus on loving God and everything else. Or I got to focus on, and all too often, we, we veer to one side or the other, right? We veer to one side or the other, where we're not living into a fullness. The reconciling Christ lived into a fullness and offers fullness for us. And it's it's not even really a process so much as it is this This experience of the more I love God, the more I love others, the more I love others, the more I love God. The more I love God, the more I love God's world, the more I love God's world, the more I love God, the more I love myself. The more I see God in me and the more I see God in me, the more I love myself. Friends, today I I pray for you. I'm so grateful that you've taken this time with me. I truly, truly love each and every one of you. I'm praying for you. And what am I praying for? That you know the fullness of God, that you are part of this reconciled story and you are helping others to become part of it too. I want you to know you are loved, to love yourself, to love God, to love neighbor. And to share that love everywhere you go with whoever you meet. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for all those who have joined us this week for this time. They, each one of them has taken time to be with you. Please honor that. Please build them up. Encourage them. Allow them to know your presence so that they may be reconciled to you, to others be part of your reconciling ministry. We pray this in your holy name, praying the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this weekend, I invite you to worship umcnl.com. You can get all the details. Uh, We will be inside at uh, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. You don't need to make reservations, but we are uh, asking everyone wear a mask uh, just so that we can be in care for one another. It will be a good day to worship.
If you aren't comfortable coming in person or cannot, uh, we will be live streaming. I think we're going to start live streaming now at nine o'clock or you can catch that whenever on YouTube. Friends, until next week, I encourage you to join me then as we delve deeper, continue to pray, continue to look at scripture and continue to grow in love of God and neighbor. So I leave you with this benediction as you go into your weekend. And now, Lord, we thank you for reconciling our inner conflicts and healing our brokenness. Send us, we pray, from this place as Christ's ambassadors of reconciliation to all those we meet. Until next week, friends, goodbye, God bless, and amen.